Welcome to the first Chem 103 uh, lab of this particular term. <clears throat> it's a little strange to be doing this without any face-to-face uh, -face contact, but uh, we do what we have to do. All right, so uh, this lab is typical of um, how we try to do labs, and that is that we have some rules about collecting data, and then with the calculations part, we're not so much concerned with a right answer as much as with the communication aspect of it. So very generically, that would be showing work, but more specifically, uh, the process of showing general equations, paying attention to units, doing whatever algebra is necessary, and then as a final step, doing the arithmetic, uh, just punching buttons in the calculator. All right, so this lab, we have a couple of pages that are describing how to do the lab, maybe a little bit of theory, but then um, directions on the lab. So again, the first couple pages of that uh, are just talking about density specifically. Um, and uh, I think we probably all know that density is a ratio of an object's mass divided by its volume. All right, so first page is again some theory. Second page, we have directions um, for how to actually do the various steps. And I think in this one, we'll just kind of skip um, the fourth part, the density of a liquid, because um, its whole purpose is actually handling some of the glassware that's a little bit unique. Uh, the calculations themselves aren't a big deal. All right, so then what we get to is, um, come back to that page, but um, the actual collection of data here. So what I shall do is go through and um, just visualize what the data is, and then you are to write down uh, the various things in the spaces required. So in part one, uh, we're going to find the, ultimately we're going to find the density of wooden block, but what we have to do is find its volume, and to do that we measure its length, width, and height. And so in the lab we have a series of little blocks. This one's block number 58, so up here we'd want to write uh, 58, so that if we lose track we can come back and um, find out what it is. It doesn't really matter what we call our length or width or height. Um, it's important though is that we get the three unique axes, and that we use our uh, metric side of the ruler. Okay, the directions here, you'll notice, say read things to the plus or minus a hundredth of a centimeter. Now that doesn't mean we end in a zero or that we end in a one, but rather we read as well as we can, even if we have to sort of make a guess, to the hundredth of a centimeter. If you'll notice on this, the individual, the numbered areas is one centimeter, two centimeter, etc. So the individual lines are going to be tenths of centimeters and we're supposed to read to one-tenth of one of those divisions. So again, we're going to have to um, estimate what that last uh, place is. All right, so let's see if we can do this. Um, here, I'll set it up like this. I'll line up this edge, and then let's see if we can get the light on that a little better. And we lose a focus here, don't we? All right, I think that works. So we would all agree that the, the values here are going to be um, between seven and eight, so it's seven point something centimeters. Um, here's the here's the point five mark. You know, let's move this over a little bit. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. So again, seven point seven point five, seven point six, seven point seven, and then your job is to say, well, what exactly is that? Now this one we might legitimately say is 7.70. So for length here, we could write 7.70. And we should include units. I need a better pen. I'll use my magic teacher pen. Yeah, all right, let's try it again. 7.70 centimeters. Okay, so that's I uh, we we'll call that the length, and then we need to do the same thing with the uh, other two uh, dimensions here. So this one I'm going to let you guys read. And again, if we're happy with the meter stick, oops, being lined up right, go ahead and read that guy. And this one, the block doesn't end exactly on one of those lines, so we'd probably say it's going to be, uh, what, 3.9 something, right? All right, so we got that one. 
And then lastly, we have to do the, uh, what do we call it, the height, I guess. Again, doesn't really matter which we call which. And so line that guy up, try to get it in focus, get my fat thumb out of the way. And again, read that one. Okay, so we had uh, seven point something, three point something, and one point something. Okay, and then the, the other thing we need to do, of course, is find the mass of the block. So we happen to have this high-tech kitchen scale, and we want this in grams. And my scale doesn't go out to the um, hundredth place. So let's say that this guy is uh, 28 point, was it 28? We'll say the mass was 27.95. Kind of make that up it's best i can do all right so again we had uh, something that was a little less than eight here something that was a little less than um what did i say i can't remember now four and something that was a little less than two and your numbers should be the actual red values um written out to the hundredth place okay now we don't want to do any calculations yet because we're still in lab so now we have to go on to uh part two and with part two we're going to uh, do the same thing, only now we're using a um, metal cylinder here. Okay, a shiny metal cylinder, so we need the height. And again, the same, same game here. That if I measure we're comfortable that I started at zero, and it looks to be a little less than three and a half, right? Okay, so it's gonna again, red to the hundredth place, you gotta do that, but we're gonna call this one, I'm gonna call it 3.5, whatever. Yeah, I'll call it 3.51, but you guys have to read your own numbers. Um, all right, and then the cross section or the diameter, and this one's always a little bit trickier. I've got, what do I got there? Oops, keep moving it. It's harder than it looks. All right, so what do we got there? Zoomed all the way in. Uh, was that 1.2 something? I don't know. I'll say mine was just so it's different, I'm gonna say mine was uh, 1.06. That's not what I actually saw on the cylinder. You guys gotta measure that for real. Oh, and let's see, it was 89 that we wanna write down. Okay, we, um, oops. Uh, and again, I made this number up just so that you guys don't get lulled into it. And if I see anybody write 1.06 on their um, data sheet, then I'll know that you didn't actually do the experiment. All right, we also need to find the mass. So uh, it's about 11 grams. Um, I wish I knew a little bit better than that because this one's a good one to do, but I'm gonna say mine was 11.23. And if you wanna use that, that's fine. If you wanna just sort of get a number that would round to 11, but carry it out to the hundredth place, that's fine too. All right. In part three of the experiment, we're going to measure the volume contained in a graduated cylinder with and without the metal cylinder. So we half fill our metal cylinder with water and then we carefully read what that is. And we come into focus there. Focus, focus, focus. Focus for me. There we go. So the the line uh, that the 30 sits right above is 30 mils. The individual lines are one mil intervals. So you know, we can either count down from the 30 or up from the 20, but we'd see that as uh, 25, 26, 27. Looks like a little more than 27 and a half, so maybe I'd call that 27.6.
So my original here is 27.6, and that's mils. And now we're going to take that metal cylinder and carefully drop it in here so it doesn't splash or break anything. And we see that the liquid level went up. And so again, our job is to read this. And I will leave that to you. Make sure there's no parallax. Let's actually look right at it. Yeah, it might be right on the line. All right. Okay, so um, I've been terribly sloppy on my data sheet. Hopefully you guys are neater, but um, you guys read the uh, dimensions of the wooden block. We got its mass. Uh, we read the uh, dimensions of the metal cylinder, have its mass, and then finally we measured the initial and final volume of the graduated cylinder, um, the difference of which will give us the um, mass of the, uh, or sorry, the volume of that metal cylinder by uh, water displacement. All right, now we're going to take that stuff and go to our next page. And for any of the exams, quizzes, um, other than the ones that are online in a multiple choice, uh, labs, we always want to have a general equation. So a general equation, which I write as gen eq, is a relationship that tells us something um, um, that we care about. And in this case, we have two things. We have that volume equals length times width times height. Uh, and then separately, we'll have the density is mass over volume. So first thing we got to do is write down a general equation. You don't have to write out general equation, but you do have to write this. And again, I don't really care about right answers. I mean, I assume we get the right answers, but when I grade, it's really about general equation. I want to try to line up my equal signs. I don't repeat the V, I'll just have the equal sign and then I'll replace these terms with the data that we collected. So we had 7.70 centimeters times whatever they were, I don't even remember anymore, 3.21 centimeters times 5.62 centimeters equals whatever it equals. And I'm just going to make this up. Uh, what's that going to be? 24 times 5 is 120. I'll say it's 120.1 centimeters cubed. And again, when I actually go through and, and grade things, I look at the units here and I see that I can trace those units back to the data as it was recorded. So I don't like to see it magically, you know, units disappear or reappear. All right, uh, it was sort of a, a bad planning on my part because I should have done this way over to the uh, left uh, so that I could do the rest of it here. Uh, dense, oh, and then the last step here is uh, sig figs. If here I have um, three sig figs allowed, then I really should round this or should have rounded it to three sig figs here. So in my case, it was my 120. So up here, 110, 20 centimeters cubed. All right, density is mass over volume equals my mass from the previous page was 27.95 and my volume I said was 120 the decimal point makes it a sig fig um, centimeters cubed equals whatever it equals um, got a calculator here Um, you guys can all do this, but with my made up numbers, I get uh, 27.95 divided by 120. I got 0 0.23. I would be really skeptical of this um, because I don't think any woods are that low density. But of course, I made up these numbers. They weren't what uh, we read off of the sheet there. Um, so anyway, my made up numbers uh, grams per cubic centimeter. All right, so I want to reiterate. The important thing is that we see general equations. We show the units the whole way and um, try to pay attention to the significant figures. All right, in the second part, 
What's our general equation? Let me start way over to the right like I should. Volume equals, uh, um, a cylinder has a volume which is going to be the cross-sectional area times the height. And the cross-sectional area is of course the area of the circle which is pi r squared. And we also know that um, uh, the radius, we didn't measure, we measured the diameters and that's one half of the diameter. So I'd want to calculate this guy and then I'm going to substitute this radius in here and be sure to square it and then multiply it by the measured height and I get a, um, a volume there. And then just as above, we're really trying to calculate the density. So density is equal to mass over volume is going to equal whatever that is. Okay, and as above, my density of wood, I got something less than one. It's kind of too far less, but uh, at least it's sort of consistent with thinking wood floats. Down here, I'd expect to find a density that's um, you know, a little greater than uh, one, probably a lot greater. One of the least dense metals is aluminum. That's got a density of about 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, iron goes up to about 10. There's some metals that are around 20, but we don't have any of those in this lab. Okay, and then um, part three, we did the same metal cylinder, uh, but now we're finding the volume um, with kind of a ad hoc equation here. But our change in volume is what we care about, and that's going to be the final volume minus the initial volume. So if my final volume was, you know, 33 mils, and my initial volume was 27 mils, then, oops, I'm going to find that volume to be, um, what is that, I don't know, 3.5.4, I think. Uh, my density is, again, mass over volume equals whatever it is. Okay, so we're going to have uh, all this stuff calculated for those two parts. And something to reflect on is that these two objects, even though they were measured with um, very different techniques, it's the same object, so it really should have the same density. And so we'll leave it up to you to uh, see how close that actually got. Uh, and again, we didn't do part four, so I don't even worry about that part. Okay, so um, that's that's really the extent of the calculations for this lab. Um, and then we want to also do what I'll call a cover sheet um, and just kind of touch on a couple of these things. So um, I'll do a separate um, video talking about uh, roadmaps and uh, unit conversions, but uh, suffice it to say, this guy here, I'd like to see a roadmap. Go ahead and copy this down, RM for roadmap. And, and what that is is a, a kind of a shorthand of rephrasing the question. So the question is asking how many cubic centimeters and it's starting with grams of gold. So my roadmap is going to start with grams of gold, symbol for gold is AU, and I'm going to go through some process. Maybe it's one step, maybe it's a couple, um, to get me cubic centimeters of gold. Okay, And so I'd look and say, well, how can I do that? I have something that's going to have to be a gram to volume conversion. On the front page of the, um, uh, the sheet there, we happen to have a table of densities. And we see that the density of gold, I'll put D subscripted AU, is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, so there's my conversion of grams to centimeters. So again, roadmap would be this. Okay, no numbers, no equations. It's just how do I go from you know point A to point B, and then the solution. follows that roadmap. So if I'm starting with 100 grams of gold, what I want to do is have those units of grams in the denominator. So I'll have 19.3 grams is one cubic centimeter. And when I do this, the grams cancel, and I'm left with uh, just cubic centimeters there. And if we do this, what do we mean? It's a little over 5, I don't know, 5.5 something, 5.51. I'm not even going to calculate it. I'll let you do that. Okay, and then sig fig wise, we had uh, three sig figs in the 100. The density doesn't matter. That's sort of a definition, even though it's only given to three. So bottom line, um, three is appropriate there. Okay, the next one. Um, 
I won't do for you, and you can look it up and see what the answer is if you want, but what I care about is, again, showing the work. So I want to see a roadmap. And a lot of times I'll do that as two steps. You know, what am I starting with, one am I ending with is the first expression, and then I follow it up with one that has actually, um, you know, an arrow for each step. So just to get started here, we have a density here with a ratio. It's grams per cubic centimeter, and we want to get that to pounds per cubic feet. So I want a string of things that are going to go from here. I'll do the first part. Grams per cubic centimeter. And I'm going to do however many steps it takes to get to uh, pounds per foot cubed. Okay. On um, tests and things, I'd always give you the conversion factors, how many grams are in a pound, how many centimeters are in A, whatever we might need. Um, I'd expect that we'd go from cubic centimeters to cubic inches, um, but anyway, um, we can look that stuff up. So uh, it should be numbers that we'd um, um, have easily accessible to us. So again, we're going to see a roadmap with specific each step along the way, and then um, do the solution uh, that's going to follow that. And Again, that's a very simple roadmap. I'd like to see one that has each of the steps that you're going to do. Okay, uh, maybe write me out a little thing um, based on your densities for part two and three. Um, you know, what, what do you think in terms of your skill? If you were doing this experiment, which basically you are because you're reading the values, uh, how uh, close together can um, those densities be expected to be? Um, you know, plus or minus a tenth of a gram per mil, plus or minus a hundredth. Um, Etc. And then based on your density, uh, you can either try to look it up on Wikipedia. I've never done this. Just to type in metal with the density of whatever your value is, or you can try to compare it to that list uh, that's on the front page. And with that, we're done. So what you need to do then is turn in with your name and stuff on the front, these three pages, um, and you'll submit those ideally as a single PDF in an orientation that has this stuff up. Um, if you don't know how to do that, um, figure it out. But for today, if you want to just take photos and submit them as JPEGs, that's okay too. Uh, problem there is that that usually means you have three uh, documents instead of just one as a PDF. Um, okay, so that's that for this lab. Um, and then I'll, like I say, uh, get going on a uh, uh, more exhaustive description of this roadmap stuff.